Hey yo, my name is Sarah and today we are on stop five of the book tour. That means we're getting closer to the end of this tour. So last time we were in Arabia. Now we take a long flight over further up north to St. Petersburg. That's right people, today's book review is The Crown Scheme by Evelyn Skye. Oh this book, this book was in Tense without being intense, if that even makes sense. Um, non spoilers, five out of five stars. This gets a five out of five stars. So, um, this book takes place in Imperial Russia in the 1800s and mostly focuses in St. Petersburg. So, we have the two main characters well, two main characters and sidekick. Uh, her name is Vika. And his name is Nikolai, and they are both what are called enchanters, meaning they can perform um, types of magic. And for the sidekick, his nickname is Pasha, but he's actually the heir to the kingdom of Russia. And like, you know, he goes around like mystique. He goes around in disguise and just hangs around with the people. I like that. So um, in this book, uh, Nikolai and Vika, since they are both enchanters, there can only be one enchanter to the axis of all of Russia's magic. So they have to compete in what's called the crowns game. Five turns each, and either the Tsar gets to decide who becomes his enchanter, or in a way, the Ma Russia itself picks. And so if one person lives, the other person dies. Hmm. I love the visual that Evelyn Sky gave it actually made me feel like I was in Russia it gave a good um, idea of the time period even though like the first chapter show tells you what the time period is you like get an idea like wow this is amazing and it was um, interesting how Vika and Nikolai played their moves in the game how Pasha got wrapped into all this and how it turns out there are some more point of views in here than was led on so yeah, uh, so again, visuals were amazing because I actually looked up some things for like St. Petersburg because I kept thinking, you know, Moscow, and I kept thinking Moscow in my head. I looked up St. Petersburg and it just fits. It fits with everything. I'm like, oh my lord, I need to go visit now. So um, yeah, I, I recommend this for those of you who like um, historical fiction mixed with um, fantasy. Well, not exactly fantasy. Yeah, maybe fantasy for magic. Then pick it up. Pick this book up. It's a duology. The um, the next book is called the um, the Crown's Fate. But pick up the Crown's Game, and you'll be like, I can't put this down. I can't put this down because I was basically like that. We got to like a certain point, like in the first quarter of the book, and I was like, Ugh. so yeah, five out of stars. Five out of five stars, people. The Crown's Game by Evelyn Sky. Meep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Bye, non spoilers. Wah. Spoilers. Okay. No CW because it can go a little cheap on the graphics, so that's out of the game. No MTV because they did well with Shinar, but that was all the green screen. No premium channels because it's not violent, bloody, or have any sex in it. Let's see. Not history channel because they would take the history portion. But not put in the magical aspects. Hmm. Who can adapt this book series into a TV series? A faithful adaptation. Marco Polo. They were on set. Last Kingdom. They were on set. Netflix. Netflix. Talk to the author. And make this into a TV series. Go to St. Petersburg and film. Film this into a show and I will pay. I will pay for Netflix. So, yeah. Spoilers. So, like I said, uh, basically three points of views, but then Evelyn Sky tricked us, making us think, oh, it's only gonna be three point of views. It's not. So, um, starts out with Vika and her father, Sergei, Sergei on an island and where she specializes more in elemental magic. So we can like see her working with fire, ice, lightning, and so forth. 
and like her father is like a very great mentor in a way. Compared to Nikolai and his mentor, oh god, I, I did not like this woman at all. That I really did not remember her name. She, she she's um Sergey's um sister, Jelena. Jelena. She's all Miss Fancy. The ground's basically beneath me because she floats. And so Nikolai, he mostly specializes in the technical parts of magic. Like he can make, uh, like bridges and stuff. And, you know, that kind of stuff. More like the technical modern version. While, um, Mika is more old uh, natural magic in a way. So they're kind of opposites, but they fit each other in a way. So, um, I think that in this world, it's not just Russia. I believe that there are times where there are other enchanters because they mentioned one in Morocco that's still around. But, you know, the church and everything. Oh, they're witches. Burn them at the stake. That's what Vika kind of fears a little bit. And so, yeah. I think there might, might have been more enchanters in the days. But as time progressed, people forgot about them. So, um, Vika, she wants to be the Imperial Enchanter. And so does Nikolai, but it turns out they, they just know that there's another enchanter out there, meaning that the crown team is going to come out eventually. So Pasha, short for Pavel, who is the heir to the Russian kingdom, he's, Pasha, he's Nikolai's best friend, and he goes around incognito, and people like, they always like talking around him, thinking, oh, that's not the Tsar's son or anything, they just think he's a normal kid. And that's what I like about royals that do that, I love it when they go out and actually interact with their people and hear what they're saying and like they, they don't know that they're talking to the future ruler of their country so i have fun when pasha drags nikolai out and they go do that stuff um they do come across vika accidentally when they go to an island just to go hunt and explore they leave the other six other noble boys around to go hunt and they come across vika who is training and they see her rise from the fire like a phoenix. She freezes their feet with ice knowing that they are there. And then she runs off. Nikolai, knowing that's the other enchanter, wants to run away. But Pasha, oh Pasha, he is, who is this beautiful lady? So, I don't exactly ship Nikolai and Vika together. I mean, like, they both have magic, but in a way, both came from Russia. And it had to have one sole person once more to contain all that magic, right? So I'm thinking it was just the magic that was pulling them together, not exactly how they really felt. I think it was the influence of magic. I'm more with Pasha and Vika together. What would that be? Vasha? No. Visha. Visha! Hashtag Visha! I am with hashtag Visha. I am for Pasha and Vika. So, yeah. Uh, so the Tsar initiates the crowns game uh, by the expense of his daughter Yolina, who is the imperial princess. And she's more of the military, serious, political strategist in the family, while Pasha's not. So I can understand Yolina making a, a stronger Tsar in a way. And so, yeah, because of her, the Tsar ignites the crowns game so and the theme is the birthday so they Nikolai and Vika they get five turns and they have to create something based on the theme for Pasha's birthday now Jelena and Sergey are sent away because they can't talk with their mentors so they have to do things on their own it is a while we are away that we find out that Vika's father is not her father I wonder why. Let's see. This girl has red hair with a black stripe through it. I mean, she's not the Russian version of Rogue, but huh, that diff that uniqueness in all of Russia. I wonder why. Eventually, Jelena gets it out of uh, Sergey because she's like, "You never had a kid. You're always working." He said that he found Vika at the base of a volcano because her mother. A volcano nymph abandoned her there. There are still nymphs alive? 
Because Pasha's doing research and he's finding out things that were in the legends but also turned out to be real and went extinct. Nymphs were one of them. Apparently they're still alive at volcanoes and Pasha Nfika is half volcano nymph. And we have no clue who her father is. Is that why she's able to control the elements so well? I'm like, I need the backstory on this one, Zer Sergei. You need I mean, he doesn't know that much, so forget you. I need a story on how this happened. I'm now interested in, pa in Vika's um, origin story. And so, we also find out something about Nikolai's past, too. Because apparently he was with some nomad who traveled in the steep, and they really didn't like him out because of his magic, and that's how Jelena was able to easily buy him. Another point of view that we did not know about, because we have not exactly a zombie rising from the grave. I'm going to call her a revenant. Her name is um, Izana. She was a healer, faith healer. She fell in love with a Russian soldier, slept with him a few times, and then he left, leaving her there. She was pregnant. She gave birth to her child. He nearly died, so she transfer the pain and she's been underground as a mummy living off of the energy of insects and now she's alive as a creepy revenant who wants to go like I want my son I want my son that's Nikolai's mama he's on it she's gonna be trouble cuz she started trouble all the way till the end of the book and I have a feeling she's gonna play a crucial part in the next book, because I will tell you why close to the end. So, um, yes, Nikolai and Vika, they play their turns. Um, Nikolai does the first one because also they have to see if they can kill each other. He repaints a whole part of a sector in St. Petersburg because it used to be like the crown jewel. And everyone's like thinking, oh, it's beautiful. I can't believe the czars and men managed to get out here during the night and do all this. But Vika's like, because they have like a brand that burns every time they know they're going to play. And I'm just like, I know Nikolai did something. Why are there stone birds on the top? I will go outside very hesitantly. The moment she goes outside, a bunch of stone birds coming down at her. So she's like, my own birds, attack! So we got real birds and stone birds going, kaka, kaka! Oh, Lord. So, nice try, Nikolai, but you can't get that one on Vika. She knows what you're up to. So that's why I appreciate Vika's turn, because she made the water in the canal do like a cool um, water works right that's like a cool fountain trick and everyone's like oh I wonder how the SARS men were able to do that they think the SAR is doing all this to throw a big extravagance before birthday celebration for his son and Vika at the same time makes the canals turn into different colors like a rainbow thing well everyone's focused on the water works with Nikolai there just inspecting Vika's work he, she cr throws a lasso of water and jerks him into the canal. Everyone thinks, oh, he died of this. Someone save him. Oh, he's okay. Because Nikolai comes back out. Touche, Vika. Touche. So it basically goes on like that for their next turns. Uh, Nikolai um, does a trip where there's two big boxes with a jack in the ballerina. And they do a grand performance in the air. And then he tries to crush Vika with an invisible bubble. Her next move isn't very pretty. She um, makes a lightning storm to try to get Nikolai, but he's like, I don't think this is what the Tsar had in mind for the birthday celebration. So she's like, fine, I won't kill you today. And so Nikolai's next move was making two wardrobes, one for every woman in um, St. Bre Petersburg to put in their clothes and it comes out like a great masquerade thing because Pasha's birthday theme is masquerade so anyone can go as they come and because Pasha wants to he also tried to invite Vika I'll get you that and so you know how you can meet the girl masquerade so and Nikolai also sends one to um, Vika's flat for her as well so that's her that's his next move nice try because uh, Vika makes an island she makes an island out in the Bay of St. Petersburg and it's like <gasps> I wonder who's gonna win It's like but you know what? Nikolai gets that and he makes a bunch of lanterns, a dog for people to come on, and benches that if you sit on them you're transported into a dream of another place. Like uh, one place was Vika's Island because it's basically from Nikolai's memories and what he's read and what he's heard from other people. I'm 
could spend a month here and visit all of the benches. So, and then they take a dark turn, and then uh, Rika, she summons up her pet rat. Oh, he's so cute. And all the other rats and cats and moths and send them into Nikolai's house to destroy. But then she just stops. And then I will get you Nikolai's turn because he's just like last to the first turns. So, yeah. Um, because um, Nikolai's kind of been ghosting Pasha. Pasha's been finding out all this information on the Crowns game by his own. And so he goes back to the island, meets one of Vika's friends who calls him Frenchie. And so, and then he, that's how he gets interested in Vika. And when he meets the lady again in St. Petersburg, he like invites them to the masquerade. So it's like, she calls her, him Frenchie. And at the time I was confused, like why are all these Russian people in St. Petersburg always sound speaking French and not Russian? And why do their clothes seem more Westernized, AKA European Westernized? And I'm like, why, 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 why is that? Then I, I, I looked up something on random one day and like a few decades before these events from the 1800s was Peter the Great, who basically was denied to Russia. I was like, oh, okay, okay, I get it, okay, that makes sense now. So I was like, I got my timetable down. So uh, Pasha meets Vika at the dance because she's Lady Snow because of her dress and he dances with her. And Nikolai dances with her as they have a like, little conversation and she has no clue how to dance. Like, don't worry, I got you. And so he charms her feet and she manages to dance and she feels all happy and stuff. And then she starts freaking out and then she leaves Cinderella style. And that's when she makes the island. So, um, as I said, I think it's the magic in Vika and Nikolai that bring them together because they really didn't like each other at first. But after like they touch and our magic like scenes with each other, that's when they start having fun feelings. I think it's the influence of magic and that they, they it's not their real feelings that mean anything to each other. I, I don't know I wonder how that's going to come out in the next book because I'm, you know Visha. And so um, yeah. So the Tsarina, she's in poor health and the Tsar at demands that, you know, for the Imperial Enchanters to come and see if they can get them somewhere south for her health. You know Vika, she's now able to evidence out and stuff, so she transports them. Every time I hear that word, I think of a song from Evanescence, because it's called Ev and the movie's called Evanescence, and that's transporting around as little bubbles. Sorry, every time I hear that word, I think of Evanescence, so you keep getting a theme song from the band Evanescence. Evelyn Sky, is that why you came up with the word? I wonder. So, um, yes. Uh, oh my god. Vika finds out that Sergei is dead. And when Pasha becomes czar after finding out that his best friend is an enchanter and thinking that he's been playing him this whole time and like basically their friendship is over, commands that now that the czar and the Tsarina are dead, I'm now the czar, we shall put an end to the game. And so he's going to be like Final Combat style. And so then Jelena tells um, Vika that Sergei is dead because of her. Because Vika got a letter saying her father is dead, who's not really her father, but she still believes him as her father because he raised her as his daughter. Yeah, she kept, Juliana, just to get in her head, says, oh yeah, you know that bracelet that Sergei gave you? Yeah, you're siphoning off all of his power until he died, so he's dead because of you. Poor Vika runs off crying. Uh, Nikolai, who no longer has his best friend, gets, you know, is drunk and everything, and then he meets his revenant mama. He's on that. Who killed all of the women in their tribe, leaving their children motherless. Kills the Tsar and lets nature take its course with the Tsarina. And drops a great bombshell on Nikolai. Because she's sowing the seeds of doubt all through Russia. Saying that, you know, the Tsar had affairs. Who should say that the Tsarina didn't have one? Making Pasha possibly illegitimate. And like, oh, hey, by the way. That Russian soldier who I slept with and the Tsar who I killed is Nikolai's father. Making him a possible successor to the throne. Honest to God, I did not see that one coming. I really thought that she was just getting revenge because the Tsar was being all mean to Nikolai and I thought she just slept with a random soldier. But no! It had to be the Tsar! 
My nice name is Alexander. Alexander, what were you thinking when you took a faith healer to your bed? Surely you would have thought she would go all mama cuckoo and try to, you know, come back. But no, you did not. Let me put the charger back in. So yeah, Azana killed the Tsar. So he sees a doubt that Pasha might not be the legitimate heir. And that, you know, oh my son, I have done this all for you. He leaves her, thank God, in the church for a few hours. I think she's going to play a crucial part in the next book. I mean, we're not done with her yet. So, yeah, Yelena being the mastermind that she is, basically convinced Pasha to take the people that uh, Nikolai and uh, Izana... No, oh my god, no, god. That Vika loves. And so if they don't complete the game, then they're going to be harmed. So... Nikolai, he says he's in love with Vika, sacrifices himself by using the knife Jelena gave him, but it turns out when he stabs himself, she knew that he was going to do that because when he stabs himself, she, he's actually stabbing Vika, but he uses his magic to help keep her alive while she heals herself, but at the same time, he dies, thus making him the, making Vika the Imperial Enchanter. So at the end of the book, Vika has wants nothing to do with Pasha friendship wise and will just serve him. It's been a week and Nikolai had basically disappeared in her arms. He didn't incinerate as they believed. He just like ghosted out. And so uh, there was a funeral but she didn't want to go. And she's in the she's on one of the benches that is part that gives takes her to the steep where it was Nikolai's uh, memories. And like you know, she's watching the eagle and she knows that there's a figure out there. But then it's a different figure and it's a shadowy figure. Just like how she met Nikolai. So she knows that's Nikolai, and that's where the book cuts off. So I'm like thinking, Nikolai's not really dead in a way. There might be something lingering about him in the dream. Or it might be, have something to do with the, the game. Like, I'm thinking, are the other enchanters that had to play in the Crowns game? Because it's, like, it's like an iffy, there's like more than one born. Are they still alive? Are they shadows of themselves in a different world? That might be how Nikolai is still alive in a way. So, yeah. Um, Pasha's gonna get hit because we know that the Ottomans are up to something and so is another group in Asia. So, Russia's kind of weak at the moment. Yelena, she might be the spine to Pasha needs, but you know, she's too cold and calculating, which I kind of like. But she might overmiss something because of that. Uh, Vika is gonna be just doing what Pasha says because she's an Imperial Enchanter, but she's not gonna fall for him because he's kind of heartbroken that knowing that Nikolai loved her knowing that he, Nikolai knew knowing that Pasha left Vika in return Izana is going to be slithering around St. Petersburg causing more trouble and Nikolai's going to have to figure a way how to get back to his best friend and the woman he loves because there's trouble coming to Russia it's like, uh, I was with Vika on one moment when she asked the star question why can't there be two imperial enchanters like there has to be one sole enchanter to contain all of the magic of Russia. Russia! There's two Imperial Enchanters! Like, if one dies, a man will find the magic it's sent to the other person. But, like, two people holding hands together. Ooh, more power for Russia. I was like, you know, what can that happen? That would have been amazing. I would have loved to have lived in this time period. And being, you know, I would have been skeptical about all the presents and stuff. But if I was, in a, if I was an enchanter and I was getting ready to be summoned for the uh, the crowns game, I'm out of here. Let's see, America is way too far across the sea. Europe's not the best place. You know what? So it's not Asia, but I'm going to go with second best. I'm going to Mongolia, and I shall be there until I. Die! Because I am not participating in this crown scheme. No, thank you. But if I was an enchanter and I was the only one in there, I wonder what my magic was specialized in. Because of Vika, I think because of the fire nymph thing, and because her father trained her on the island, like, you know, more elemental, natural. Uh, Nikolai being in the city all this time and doing more work with, like, cogs and stuff is more the technical part. Hmm, I'm going to have to get back on you on that one, because I don't know what my power is. But that will be if I'm the only enchanter. If I'm not, hey, I am ready to go to Mongolia. It's not that far of a ride there. So, yeah. I love the visuals. I actually felt like I was 
in St. Petersburg because Evelyn Scott, not only did she describe the city, but she described the clothing, the way people acted, the language, and the food. Oh my god, the food. Can I get a menu, people? Can someone who is a major fan of the story get in their kitchen and make the food? Of course, there's some that can't flow, but I don't care. And so, um, I, I, I love the pace. I loved how the enchanters played their parts in the game. Um, the other point of views, besides um, Izana, um, they, they kind of helped expand more what was going on in the city. Um, and yeah, and left off on a nice, interesting cliffhanger, leading, most likely leading straight up to the next book, um, the, gate, the, the Crown's Fates. And I'm like wondering, are we going to see more of the Ottomans get attacked? Is the other part of Asia going to attack Russia? How is Vika get handled? Is what the hell is Azana up to? And how? what's the bargain Nikolai's got to make to get back to his world? So I'm like, you know, all these questions I need to be answered. And are we going to see... Are we going to see Vika's father? Have we already met Vika's father? I don't think we have yet, but have we? So, yeah. The Crowns Game by Evelyn Skye. Five out of five stars. It was it was very I, I need to start reading the next book. But you know, we're we are on one more stop at the end of our book tour. So yeah. My name is Sarah and bye!